So let me give you a couple quick tips about designing with V-belts. Here I have a relatively stiff V-belt. I wanna use this to illustrate problem number one with using a very small pulley. And that's a concept called wrap. As you can see, when I pull this V-belt tight, you can look at the pulley and see that I don't have a whole lot of engagement on the actual pulley itself. The angle of contact that I have between here and here on this pulley is called wrap. The greater your wrap, the more power you're gonna be able to transmit with your pulley. And that's the issue with using very small pulleys. They just don't allow for very much wrap. Designing a machine with a very small pulley like this means that this pulley is going to slip. When it slips, your first temptation is to say, my belt is not tight enough. But making the belt tighter leads to a different problem. You don't actually want your belt to be that tight. The best way to do it is you want it to be snug and then have just a little bit of slack. You, want, you should be able to flex your belt just a little bit. So we select a larger pulley. We try not to make it too tight. And this will allow us to get much more wrap. We can transmit more power and have less vibration. There's another factor you wanna consider, and that is actually the groove in your pulley. You wanna be sure that if you have an A-style groove in your pulley, that your belt is also uh, A-style. And this is easy to check. You just need to look at the value uh, when you purchase your pulley and then buy a belt that matches that. Looking here at my Shigley's Mechanical Engineering Design book, there's a section here on the belt section and this just describes the geometry of the belt. But you'll notice way over here, it talks about the uh, motor's power range, and then there's a minimum sheath. So 75 millimeters is uh, almost three inches in diameter. Your pulleys really shouldn't be much smaller than this guy. Uh, that's three and a half. One more factor you wanna consider is the distance between your pulleys and we're referring to the center to center distance. This guy is your driver, which would be the case for me, and the motor is pulling like this. I want you to notice that this side tightened up and this side went slack. So this is considered the slack side, and as you increase the center to center distance, you're gonna get more and more slack, more and more vibration here, and that's gonna reduce the life of your belt. According to my Shigley's book, you don't wanna go more than three times the sum of the two diameters. So you would add the two diameters together. Uh, this one's about five inches and we'll say this is three. So that's eight inches times three would be 24 inches would be the maximum distance you'd wanna have between these two pulleys. The minimum distance would be the diameter of one sheave. Notice that here you've got just the radius and so you don't wanna go uh, less than the diameter of the larger sheave. One more option to consider when you really wanna use a very small pulley would be to use an idler. An idler pulley would just be another pulley placed on the outside, which would push in, uh, it would increase your wrap and give you more traction throughout your system. The only problem that I have with this personally is that you are increasing the number of bends in the belt, which will decrease the life of the belt because it's constantly changing shape every time it goes around the pulley, but it depends upon the rating of the belt and the horsepower being delivered. If you have a belt that's rated for say one horsepower and you're only transmitting one third horsepower, you know, it's probably not even worth worrying about. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is the amount of horsepower one belt can deliver. And that's why I've got two V belts here. This four horsepower motor was a little bit too much for one belt, but two belts can handle it just fine. And there are calculations for these kinds of things. You just need to see what your belt is rated for and then you can decide how many belts you need. Now, when you start thinking about industrial applications, you can buy sheaves that have 10 or 12 grooves and they'll go as big as you need for your V-belt application. But in the home shop, this is probably the most you would ever need with a four or five horsepower motor. All right, guys, I've got one more tip for you and that relates again to the size of your pulley. You can look at my setup here and you say, well, Jeremy, you've got almost a seven inch diameter pulley here, uh, six and three quarter actually. And then the two pulleys you made over here are 14 and a half. Why not use a small guy like this, maybe a double groove pulley, but a much smaller uh, OD. Then you could save a lot of work, make that guy a lot smaller. But there's a hidden penalty for using this small guy here. And it's not about the angle of wrap that I showed you earlier. Before I tell you the problem, I want to show you a chart from a website that I pulled up earlier who sells V-belts. 
if you look at this first line going from left to right, it shows at a fixed RPM, as the diameter of the sheave gets larger, the horsepower rating goes up. And that might seem counterintuitive, but there's a very good reason for that. Your pulley is a lever. Consider for a moment, this is your axis of rotation, and this is where the force is being applied in order to give you different amounts of speed and torque. For the same horsepower rating, if I use a smaller pulley, I have to apply more force because my lever is shorter. If you think about wrenches, and you have a wrench like this and a wrench like this, if I wanna apply the same amount of torque on this shaft, I'm gonna be doing less work with this guy than I would with this guy. And it's the same thing for your V-belt. As the pulley gets smaller, it has to work harder to deliver the same horsepower. All right, here comes my favorite part about posting videos, and that is reading the comments when the video goes live. Let me tell you, I've got this amazing group of tinkerers, mechanics, engineers, all these people who give me great feedback after every video. I will take some of my favorite suggestions that come in, because I'm sure some will, and I will add those to the video description, so be sure to check out the description. And I'll also add any technical corrections if I made any uh, mistakes in the video. Well, I sure hope you found that helpful. Thanks for watching.